Can you talk about how this came about? Um, yeah. Um, so uh, after I finished playing, I took kind of a, a break to figure out what I was going to do. And I was actually doing a little instructing, even with the Cardinals, through the coaching, uh, doing a roving catching instructor position. Um, I was asked about coaching youth baseball and a, and a team and taking over and trying to get some boys together. And I was uh, coming back from New York, and I sat down. I said, you know, I, I'm just going to list it out for these people what I think. Um, some of my thoughts, some of the things that I've seen with five kids, we've seen a lot of different things. Some things done well, some things not so much. And um, started writing out what I thought was important, some places where we were missing it. And next thing you know, it's five single space pages later, um, I get this thing. And then I, saw, I had a meeting that night with the parents. And I'm thinking, wow, they're going to think I'm out of my mind. Um, but I felt it was right. And it just kind of listed it out. And it really was, if this doesn't sound right, then we all just walk away, no harm, no foul. And as I'm reading it, I felt even more uncomfortable because I was basically telling these parents who had never done anything wrong that uh, we were all kind of going about it the wrong way. But it was actually just trying to help the parents understand uh, what a lot of these kids and how their parents have acted that allow them to go play for people like Coach Corbin and Coach Holiday and, and the guys that make it to the highest level. There's some, there's some commonality to uh, how, how those parents encourage and help those kids get to that, that level, whatever level that might be. Um, the, the thing, somehow, I don't know who put it out there, but they put that title, the Matheny Manifesto, which was not my idea. Um, <laughs> They put that on this uh, on an email or, uh, and sent it out, and uh, it kind of caught traction. And I, I got to tell you, I really struggled because as it it kept coming back time after time, I, I and and then I had different publishers asking if I was interested, and and I just got this job, and I was just trying to hang on to it with my life, and uh, I thought I'm the last guy in the world that's qualified to write a book, and and, and I almost uh, I actually almost walked away um, just for the what the appearance is, because it's not necessarily how to manage. It's an idea about youth sports. And then I realized I'd be an absolute coward if I walked away from it, and why not take advantage of the platform I had if I believe in what the message is, and I think that it can make a difference. And both of those, I would say, were true. So um, let the project go, and next thing you know, uh, the thing is, is, is still selling. And I get people almost every single day that, that thank me, that uh, they, they they saw something that they didn't really even know that they were doing that's helping them and their kids progress in youth sports and grow together as a family. Uh, so it's been a success in my mind. Well, talk about the social pressure for parents in the youth athletic space. I think um, you know, that, that's a legitimate question because uh, I think pressure is probably uh, goes synonymous now with youth sports. Um, pressure on the kids to perform. And then as kids perform a little more, uh, parents invest a little more, which causes more tension in, in all regards. And then it gets to the point where I think it's just natural maybe to expect a return on your investment. And they don't even realize what's happening, but uh, there's pressure that you can maintain maybe your social group that you have or maintain uh, or, or the, the idea, obviously, of this coveted scholarships always in, in the background. And, and there's so much that is built around what we define as success um, and putting another trophy or making that team or getting that scholarship that I think people lose sight of, of what real success is and, and how to define true success at the youth level. And uh, you know, we get back to those initial, initial statistics that less than 5% of these kids that play at the youth level are ever going to even play varsity. So, you know, are, are we truly weeding these kids out? Is that what it is, a weeding course? Or are we going to take sports uh, and use it as an avenue uh, and, and a conduit to, to teach character like Coach Corbin does before every practice. You're going to take time, not just talk about it, but are you going to take time to actually go through and, and try and teach these kids for the 95% of them that we need to go out and be, be impactful people in our society. And, and I think the, the, how that whole thing has um, kind of lost sight. I mean, as we go out and we interview kids all the time, you ask them who the most influential people in their world are, and it's, it's these coaches and it's teachers. It, it's uh, unfortunately even sometimes more so than their parents. And I just don't think we pause enough to realize that it is a trust we've been given um, and, and it's lives, it's kids' lives. Um, you watch, as we watch David Price talking 
so well about his, his college coach and uh, the, the opportunity that we have. Um, I think it's just kind of redirecting people. And most of them are good-hearted, and, and it's not out of lack of love or, or lack of want to do the right thing. I think we just have to try and give them more information and more tools to where they can help these kids and, and their own relationships grow and, and it be a healthy experience. Well, and you have five kids. That's right. And so my question to you would be, what do you hope your kids get out of the sport experience? You know, and I'm, uh, I'm fortunate. Our, our kids, uh, four of them, have all gone on and played at that next level, and the fifth one uh, has aspirations. But you know, we, we've made sure that they understand that that does not um, define them as success in our lives and uh, does not have anything to do with how we love them, and uh, also just, but also at the same time encourage them. And if they do have the talent, you know, don't let anybody slow you down. Don't tell any, let anybody tell you that you can't achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Um, but it, it, it's a balance there. Um, yeah, we have a couple that are probably going to be able to move on to the professional level as well. It's going to be fun to watch them do that, but there's going to be a life after the game. And what are you going to do with it? I, I would not have the position that I have right now had I not gone back and finished my degree at the University of Michigan. I, I know that for a fact. And with that being said, making sure these kids understand the importance of, uh, of not just the education, but also those opportunities to, to be impacted by some of these great coaches and define their character, uh, which defines who they are and, and how they go out and change the world. And, and what do you think your role as the parent should be? Uh, as, as a youth parent, uh, regardless of what I know, um, I, I've always taken on myself that I'm usually sitting way far away um, the kids know that I'm there, uh, and, and afterwards, um, I make sure that, that I'm not trying to take over the job of the coach. Um, I'll be there as a, as a support, and I truly think that that's the best example that I could have ever seen was what my parents did. Um, they showed up to every game that they could. My dad was a construction worker. He'd show up after working a long 12-hour day covered in dirt, and I knew he was there, and he never said a word, uh, one way or the other. But after the game, uh, he was very supportive, and then we went out, and. He asked if I wanted to have some batting practice, we wanted to play catch, and, and, and that really let the game become my own, and that drove my passion for, for what I wanted to do. Um, and I think it, it, that kind of gets flipped to sometimes uh, we all have these great ideas, or maybe we see a kid with so much talent thinking, you know, if he just had a little bit more of a push, that might put him over the edge, and, and usually what that does is push him over the edge to where all he wants to do is sit in front of a TV and play Game Boy so somebody doesn't yell at him all the time. Um, it's a fine balance, but for me and for our kids, what's worked best, um, and, and it's tough, and I get that, and I don't always get it right, um, but, but when I do, it's, it's a silent source of support, and let them be, be the engine that drives whatever it is that they want to do. Well, and to the youth coach, I love the nuance that you talked about in, the, uh, in your book where you were in the dugout, and you would pull guys and have them sit next to you. Can you talk about what those conversations were about? Yeah, and that's something that you know, we still do today at the, at the big league level. We're, we're still learning, all of us. Um, but when the youth level, um, I explained to the guys when they weren't on the field, that was really one of their greatest opportunities to learn. And instead of just saying that and expecting them to do it on their own and not get distracted, which is really hard, especially at the younger ages, um, set them next to me on the bench, and we start doing hypotheticals. If, if you're at second base right here, what do you think of where you're going to be, or where should he have gone with that last play, and, and just constantly badgering them with questions, and then asking them what they think, and, and then or pitch selection. That's I have a huge hang up with that, and I'm not going to be popular in this room probably with not liking the idea that, that coaches take away the art of calling a game. Um, teach them. Teach them how to call a game. And, and they're going to get it wrong. You know what? That's OK, uh, especially at the younger ages. I know for me, one of the greatest things that I loved about the catching position was the, this cat and mouse game of pitcher catcher against a hitter. And how can we figure that out and, and improve? It just opens up a whole new world to the game of baseball. Um, but I, I just believe that uh, if, if we can continue to, to teach the kids, whether it's on the bench or while, they're, while it's out in the game or while they're on the field. We're going to help, we're going to help them develop the game and, and develop in their uh, talent. We had a young player this last year named Carson Kelly who uh, had a great opportunity to come up, young kid, um, and he's got a chance as a catcher to watch one of the greatest in the history of the game with Yadier Molina. And so I'd put Carson next to me at times and, and just start grilling him with questions. And then I had him take a notebook out and start writing down different things he saw. And, and on the job training, it doesn't get any better than that. And, and I think once kids start to see that, okay, there's more to the game, and even for a kid who's, who's been drafted, been playing in the minor leagues, there was a whole nother. 
there was a whole other uh, dynamic of the game that he hadn't seen that he picked up once he got here. Yeah, one of the things that Kobe Bryant said that we talked about a little earlier is just how kids are being conditioned to be told what to do as opposed to ask the question why. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a strong statement. I think you have to have um, uh, humility enough as a coach to also accept the question why and uh, not just throw back the, uh, the old I told because I said so. Um, but it, it, it's a great atmosphere when you can have that going back and forth. And, and for us, uh, much like the, the coach and catcher, you know, you, there's nothing I think is worse than having a kid that can't even step into the box without being told to get his elbow up or he's, check, he's got 15 different checkpoints. And the meanwhile, he's trying to do something that's so incredibly difficult, which is to hit a moving baseball. Um, these kids, sometimes they, do, they get so overwhelmed that pretty soon they just they back out. There, there's a better option for them.